What if I told you that there is a whole category of skincare that isn't just makeup and isn't quiet medicine either, and they sit in this unusual middle zone, more powerful than cosmetics but not strictly regulated like prescriptions, and they are called cosmeceuticals. The word sounds a little futuristic, like something out of high-tech lab. And here's the kicker. Dermatologists actually recommend them in about 30 to 40% of their treatment. But not all cosmeceuticals deliver. Some are a hype in a jar, while others are backed by real science. So let's talk about the ones that actually work from a 2025 very recent Medscape report covering the latest dermatology conference, and the link is in the description. But first, welcome back. I'm Dr. Marie Azizian, a board-certified general surgeon and an IFM-certified functional medicine physician. On this channel, I share health tips on skin health, food and supplements, functional medicine, surgery, and the latest medical research to help you feel your best. And if that sounds good, please like, share with your friends and family, and subscribe. So first, let's talk about acne. Niacinamide, a form of vitamin B3, it's like the multitasker of skincare. It reduces inflammation, helps control oil, and boosts the proteins and fats that make your skin barrier strong. A 2024 study in Thailand tested this by having patients treat only half their face with niacinamide, and they also had ceramides with it. And after eight weeks, that side of the face showed a 77.5% reduction in pimples compared to just 63% on the plain cream side. So imagine looking in the mirror and literally seeing that one cheek heals faster than the other. So where you'll see this niacinamide? So niacinamide is actually everywhere. It's in serums, moisturizers, and in acne gels. What are the side effects? Mostly it's well tolerated, but some people notice mild redness, tingling, or a brief flush at higher strengths. So now let's talk about the acids. So first we have glycolic acid. Glycolic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid, AHA, that works on the skin's surface by dissolving the bonds between old cells, making it easier for fresh ones to rise up. And that's why it's used in cleansers, toners, and chemical peels. And think of it as a gentle broom sweeping away dullness. But if you go too hard, then it can leave your skin dry, flaky, or overly sun sensitive. The other common acid that many of you know is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid, BHA, that goes deeper, slipping into those oily pores to dissolve blockages and reduce inflammation. And you'll find it in acne washes, spot treatments, and toners. It is the deep cleaner of the bunch. And yes, it may cause some peeling or irritation, especially if it is applied over very large areas. So now let's switch to another condition, such as eczema. And eczema is all about a leaky skin barrier. And imagine your skin as a brick wall where some of those bricks are missing. So water escapes and irritants could actually sneak in. So again, niacinamide helps by boosting ceramide production in the skin, filling in the gaps. And now we have another substance that is called urea. Urea, although it doesn't sound very glamorous, it's like a water magnet pulling moisture back into the skin and locking it there. So a Scandinavian study showed that a 5% urea cream lowered the risk of flare-ups by 37%, and after six months, more than a quarter of patients were still eczema-free, compared to just 10% with a standard reference cream that was used. So where you will see them? So again, niacinamide shows up in barrier creams for eczema, so it's eczema lotions and gentle serums, while urea is also common in eczema moisturizers and food creams in higher concentrations for the feed. What are the side effects? Urea is generally safe, but higher strengths can cause stinging or burning on the sensitive skin. So now let's talk about melasma. What is melasma? Melasma is a common skin condition and it causes dark, discolored patches, usually brown or grayish brown, to appear on areas of the face, usually, like the cheeks, forehead, nose, and upper lip. And it's often triggered by sun exposure, pregnancy, and other hormonal states, or skin irritation, and it tends to be more common in women. Melasma has long been treated with hydroquinone, and it works, but it's not great for long-term use. That's where new cosmeceuticals shine. So first we have cystamine. So cystamine is an antioxidant 
that redirects pigment production toward lighter tones. And it's already available in specialty pigment creams, though some people do find it irritating or notice its distinct odor. The other one is called thiamidol. So thiamidol blocks tyrosinase, and tyrosinase is the enzymes that actually your skin uses to produce melanin. So in 2021 Brazilian study, women using thiamidol twice daily had a 43% reduction in melasma severity after 12 weeks, even slightly edging out hydroquinone. And it's now found in brightening serums and dark spot correctors with mild itching or redness as the most common side effect. So it's usually well tolerated. So here's the takeaway. Some of these cosmeceuticals truly are under a place in skincare, helping acne, eczema, and melasma with ingredients that are backed by solid research. And they're actually widely available in creams, serums, and lotions. But like all actives, they need to be used wisely. So the bottom line, the right cosmeceuticals aren't hype. They are signs you can actually put on your skin. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Until next time, bye-bye.